Welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to discover how to age well, look and feel good for longer and share what I find with you. And with new scientific studies and theories being shared all the time around how to improve our health span through lifestyle and nutrition, the conflicting information is enough to make your head spin. But now a huge new study involving no less than 467,000 participants has identified a diet that can add nearly a decade to life. And the scale of this study means that whatever the noise we hear around different ways of eating, there is a heavy weight of evidence behind the leading diet for life expectancy established in this study. So let's find out now what that is and how it was identified. So the illuminating findings of this huge new study were published just last month in the Nature Food Journal after a team of researchers analysed the data from nearly half a million people who have documented their eating habits as part of the UK's Biobank study, which has been running since 2006. Now, the Biobank study was set up to investigate the role that genetic predisposition and environmental factors like nutrition, lifestyle and medication play in the development of disease. And participants were enrolled from the ages of 40 to 69. They're grouped as either average or unhealthy eaters or as people with food intake matching the UK's Eat Well Guide and those whose diet match what the researchers called the longevity diet. And I'll explain the difference between the Eat Well and longevity diet in those healthier eating ranges in just a minute. After adjusting for other contributing factors like smoking, alcohol, how much they exercised, the study found that middle-aged men and women who changed from an unhealthy diet to eating healthier food and then stuck to it gained almost 9 to 10 years in life expectancy. And if you want to see the detail on how those extra years were calculated, I'll link to the research paper in the description below so that you can have a look through it. But in the study, those who followed the Eat Well Guide were reported to have gained just under nine years in life expectancy on average from the age of 40, while those who followed the longevity diet gained just over 10 years. And the Eat Well Guide is basically a tool used to define the UK government's recommendations for healthy eating, divided into five main food groups. That's fruit and vegetables, starchy food, dairy, protein and fat. And it includes rough targets for each group. So for instance, it advocates eating at least five portions of different fruit and vegetables every day. So it's in a similar ballpark to the longevity diet identified in this study that I'm about to run through. But those on the longevity diet would be eating a higher proportion of the healthiest foods than those sticking more loosely to the Eat Well Guide. So those who gained the most years of lifespan through this so-called longevity diet were consuming what was described in the study as a moderate intake of whole grains. So these are the unprocessed seeds of cereal plants like wheat, barley, rye and oats, as opposed to refined grains, which have a lot of the good stuff stripped out. They were also consuming a moderate intake of fruit, fish and white meat. And there was a higher intake of milk and dairy, which might surprise some people, along with vegetables, nuts and legumes, which include things like lentils and beans. And there was a lower intake of eggs and red meat. That contrasts with the unhealthiest dietary pattern picked up in the study. So those with the highest mortality and smaller lifespan. And they ate a diet that contained no or only limited amounts of whole grains, vegetables, fruits, nuts, legumes, fish, milk, and dairy and white meat. Those were all lacking in the diet. While there was a more substantial intake of processed meat, refined grains, and sugar sweetened beverages. So to re-emphasize, those at highest risk were those with a diet high in sugar sweetened beverages and processed meats. And the lowest risk categories were among those who had higher intakes of whole grains and nuts. Now, the stage in life that you make those changes also matters, but it's never too late to make a difference. So those who initially followed an average diet and later changed to healthier eating habits were found to have smaller life expectancy gains overall than those who started out with or switched earlier to the healthy diet, which means the bigger the changes made towards healthier dietary patterns at an earlier stage, the larger the expected gains are in life expectancy. But even switching to a healthy diet later in life 
can add significant lifespan, according to this study. People who made the change at 70 managed to extend their life expectancy by four or five years. So what does all this mean when you weigh it up against some of the other longevity diets that are floating around out there? Well, while this dietary guide emerging from this particular study is broader brush, it gives us a clearer picture based on a very large amount of data gathered over a long period of time that helps us to shut out some of the noise around diet and focus on where the evidence actually lies. So the arguments will rumble on around how much red meat to include in our diet for those who are comfortable eating meat and the best sources of protein. But reading this study has helped to settle my mind again because I had found that my head was being turned in a different direction with almost every wellness podcast that I listen to. For example, I recently listened to one biohacker on a podcast just the other day who was pretty much demonising nuts and vegetables and fruit and some whole grains too. And though I'm sure we will be able to finesse what the perfect longevity diet looks like even further over the years, and it will likely be personalised for us based on our individual needs, I am ignoring some of the more extreme suggestions around cutting out important food groups entirely. Instead, I'm listening to the dietitians and nutritionists like Barbara Bray, who I spoke to earlier this year, who said a balanced diet drawing from the major whole food groups while cutting back on sugar is the most evidence way to eat well right now. That's backed by the evidence we've gathered from the Blue Zones, those areas around the globe where we have clusters of centenarians who've been found to eat diets full of whole plant foods. They're not necessarily vegetarian, but those whole plant foods make up the greatest percentage of their diet. Personally, I've always leaned towards a Mediterranean diet, which is pretty much the longevity diet and where a primary source of fat is, of course, extra virgin olive oil. And if, like me, you found yourself feeling confused around what we should and shouldn't be eating for health span, then I hope this information helps. Just a reminder, I will, of course, link to the study in the description so you can read more for yourselves. And I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I know nutrition is really important to a lot of my viewers as it is to me and will have a range of opinions and experiences out there too. So let me know in the comments what's working for you. And if you enjoyed this video, then by hitting subscribe along with the notification bell, you can watch my future videos as soon as they're published. And by giving this video a thumbs up, you help it reach a larger audience. And you'll find more information and advice from the experts around both health span and skin span on my website, www.honest.scot. But for now, Thanks for watching and listening, and I'll see you next time.